today uh, we will be discussing about the module 4 which is based on arrays and strings up till now during our classes regular classes we have discussed up to module 3 which was on functions and we have seen how to write the programs by using normal functions as well as recursive functions now we have to discuss about the next module that is module number 4 which is on arrays and strings. Let me give you a brief idea about what this module includes. This module mainly consists of three subtopics that is one dimensional numeric array, two dimensional numeric array and a character array which will be also called as strings. So we will be going through these three topics in this week. As you might have already received the schedule, we have to have three interactions in this coming week. So during every interaction, the subtopic is required to be discussed and these three subtopics we have identified. So let me introduce the topic called as array. An array is basically defined as collection of similar data type items stored at contiguous memory location. So it's basically a variable where we can store many values of similar data type. Up till now we have already discussed about the different types of variables, basic data type variables. The problem with basic data type variables is one basic data type variable can hold only one value at a time. It cannot be used for storing many values simultaneously. Suppose I wanted to have a variable to store the marks of all the students present in this class for the subject let's say C program. So I need at least 60 to 70 variables because every student marks has to be stored separately and then that is not feasible or practical practical in the program because handling so many variables will be difficult and it will also require a lot of code. This type of problem means in short whenever we wanted to store and process a set of values maybe set of integer values, set of float values or set of characters and uh, these values are related with each other, then we can create an array to store and process such type of sets. So array is a very handy data type which can be used for storing and processing similar data type values. The array are basically derived data types in C programming. As we know, the C programming language supports three major types of data types. The first we already seen during our classes that is called as basic data types or inbuilt data types or generic data types. The second major type is called as user derived data type. The example is array. And third, we need to cover later on is user defined data type, example of which is structure and union. But right now we will concentrate on second type that is called as user derived data type array. So the array is basically user derived data type and it can be used to store the primitive data type values such as int, character, double, float, etc. What advantages I will get because of array? The first and the most important advantage that I will get is code optimization. That means we require less code to store and access the data. Then second advantage I will get is easy ease of traversing. That is by using for loop, a simple for loop, we can uh, retrieve the elements of an array very easily and we can process it. Then third advantage I will get is ease of sorting. 
that is to sort the elements of array we need a code of very few lines and that can be done for example uh, i have already stored the marks scored by the students in this class in the subject let's say c programming and i wanted to arrange these students in the descending order of their marks secured so the student who has secured the highest marks will come on top and student who has secured the lowest mark will come at bottom this type of sorting can be done very easily by using arrays the arrays also provide us the facility of random access that means it is not necessary that always we can store and process the values from first element to last element array allows us to access any element at any time randomly so these are the main advantages of array mainly in university question papers there will not be any question asked on theory of array mainly asked programs and to write the programs we need to learn the basic syntax rules about the array so let us begin with the declaration how do we declare array in our program the declaration syntax is quite simple like a normal variable we need to specify data type then we need to specify name and then the most importantly which is different in this case we need to specify capacity inside a square bracket for example if i want to declare an array to store five integer values then it can be declared as follows we need to write a data type let's say int because i wanted to store five integers so i will specify capacity of this array should be 5 and a is the name that i assign to this array the name of a array is basically variable name identifier so we need to follow these rules of identifiers for giving name to the array what will happen if i do this declaration in my program it will create a variable array variable whose name would be a by reserving a block of memory of size 10 bytes and this 10 byte memory block will be divided into five compartments like this so this is the variable a which will be divided into five compartments like this the size of variable a will be 10 bytes and this is the size of array a size of array a or size of any array can be always calculated by observing the capacity of that array in our case it is 5 multiplied by the size of data type in our case it is int so 2 bytes so it is 5 into 2 10 bytes these compartments are called as elements of the array each element can hold one integer value at a time therefore i can use array a to store five integer values at a time this is the advantage that i will get in a single variable a i can hold multiple values all the elements of this array you know in our case they are five they will all have name same name that is a and this will create a problem because if all they are having same name then how to access them individually the compiler provides the solution each element can be differentiated from other by using unique identification number called as index number the index numbers are not decided by program whenever we declare array the index numbers for the elements will be decided by compiler itself the rule by which the compiler decides index number is as follows for example if we declare int a of capacity 5 then it will create array as follows so you can see in the picture there will be array a created which will consist of five elements 
and now you can see all these five elements are having uh, same name a they all are having same name a but to differentiate from each other the compiler will assign the unique identification number 0 for the first element 1 for the second 2 for the third element 3 for the fourth element and 4 for the last element these the numbers which are specified in the square bracket are called as index numbers the rule used by the compiler to decide index number is very simple the index of first element is always 0 and if this is the rule then what will be the index of last element for example there is an array whose capacity is n then the index of last element will be always n minus 1 for our case since capacity is 5 the index of last element is 4 so I hope you have understood what will happen if we declare array as a part of our program. Basically we are going to get a variable uh, whose, capac whose capacity decides how many values we can store into it. So unlike basic data type variables where one variable can hold only one value, arrays are the variables which can hold many values simultaneously. Now, the question is how to store values in these elements. This is called as initialization of the array elements. The initialization of the array elements can be done by using different methods. We can see these different methods directly by writing some small programs. So let me take you to the Turbo C where we will try to write a small program for performing initialization of the array element. So I have already opened a Turbo C environment on my computer. I hope you all are able to see this. Let me make it full screen. Now I think it is more clearly visible. So this is a very simple C program we wanted to write for declaration of the array. The array can be declared by writing a simple command like let's say int a5. This is called as declaration of array. And you know when we declare array like this, we will get a variable whose name will be a, whose size will be 10 bytes and it will consist of 5 compartments. How to initialize the compartments of the array? If I try and initialize array by writing something like this, a is equal to 13 like a normal variable, this is a problem. We cannot initialize array a like this. If I compile my program, you can see it will show me one error which says L value required. Because in this case, the memory will consist of 5 compartments with same name a and compiler will not be able to decide in which compartment this value 13 should get stored. So in order to store this in a specific compartment, in a specific element, we need to specify index number. For example, if I write a0 is equal to 13, this will be more clear command for the compiler where the compiler will understand very easily that value 13 has to be stored into the first element of the array A and you know the index of first element is 0 so therefore in the square bracket the 0 specified will be considered as index if I compile this program now you will see there will not be any error so I have stored value 13 into array element let us see whether it is stored or not. I will try and display the value of this element by writing percentage %d and then a of 0. So we have included the printf command so that this value will get displayed. Let us run this program now. You can see after execution of this program the output is 13. 
that means we are able to store the value 13 into the first element of the array. This array consists of five elements and we have stored value into just one. What about the remaining elements of the array? If I do not store anything into it and if I try to display value of A1, let's check, you will find some garbage value in it. So that means other elements are not initialized. Let's check what is the value of A4, we'll find a garbage value again. So only first element whose index is 0 is now initialized with value 13. How do you initialize a remaining element? In a similar way, I can initialize any other element, let's say A4, with some value, let's say 35. And I can check whether 35 is stored into A4 or not by again executing this program. You can see value 35 is stored into the element A4. So this is how individually we can initialize the elements of array. This is method 1. So we are performing initialization we are performing initialization by using assignment where the value of the element is decided by the programmer and in this method, we can initialize only one element at a time. There is another method by which we can initialize all the elements of the array or some of them. And this can be performed uh, by using initialization in declaration. So I can do it like this. Let us delete this code. Here itself, whenever we are declaring the array, I can open a curly bracket and I can specify a set of values separated by a comma like this. So let's say 11, 22, 33, 44, 55 and close the curly bracket. When we specify uh, like this, this is called as initialization in declaration. This is called as initialization in declaration where the five elements of the array will be initialized with the values 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. Let us check. We will try and display value of the element A3. Any guess what will be the value of A3 in this case? Yes. This value 11 will be stored in A0. This will be stored in A1. This will be stored in A2. This will be stored in A3. So when I display A3, the output that I will get will be 44. Let's check. We will run the program can see the output shown is 44. That means these values will be stored sequentially in the elements of array starting from A0 and going up to A4. And these will be five elements of the array. This syntax also allows us to partially initialize the array. For example, if I specify less number of values, there are five compartments, five elements, but I specified only two values. So first value will obviously go into A0, second will go into A1. What will happen to the value present in A3? Let us run and check. So now the value of A3 shown is 0. What about the value of A2? So we will run and check. This will be 0. What about the value of A4? We will run and check. This will be also 0. This means when we partially initialize the array, in declaration, then the remaining elements will be automatically initialized to 0. When we partially initialize the array in declaration, then the remaining elements will automatically initialized to 0. But this is not applicable when we are individually initializing the array element. When we initialize the array element individually, the remaining elements will consist of garbage value. Just now I have shown that feature to you. But this is also the method which is not used by the programmers because here also the values are decided by the programmer and not the user. What if I wanted to initialize the array by taking user input? In this case, we need to declare array by writing 
a5 and then we will take one more variable let's say i which will be used as an index variable for the array and now since the array consists of five compartments i need to read five values from the user how to read the five values from the user we need to execute the scanf command five times every time the scanf command will read one value and that we need to store inside the element of the array so let me give the let me give the message to the user saying enter five integer numbers so whenever our program starts execution user will be able to see this message and then uh, we need to execute the scanf command five times so what is the better option write the scanf command once but execute it five times so we will use a for loop and we'll say i is equal to 0 why i is equal to 0 not 1 because i know the index of the first element is always going to be 0 so i is going to be used as the index inside array so it's an index variable and i know i will be always having value less than 5 because capacity of array is 5 and then every time we initialize the element of array we should in increase the index by 1 so i plus plus right and then inside this i will write a scanf command saying percentage d address of a i this is very important in the square bracket now we are specifying the variable i so when this for loop executes for the first time value of i will be 0 this will be address of 0 and then the first value entered by the user will be stored inside a0 second time when it when this for loop executes i will become 1 so this will be address of a1 so second value will be stored into the element a1 likewise last time when this for loop executes the value of i will be 4 which is less than 5 this will be address of a4 so fifth value will be stored into a4 and then obviously when i becomes 5 condition will be false the for loop will terminate so this is how we will be able to read five values from the user and uh, store them inside array what if i wanted to display the elements of this array again we need to write a for loop to display all the elements but before displaying the elements of the array let me give a message to the user saying array is equal to backslash n and to display all the elements one by one again we need a for loop write for i is equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus and then instead of scanf i will use printf command to display each element so i will write percentage d backslash t to separate the elements and we will write a of i so you can see again variable i is used as an index for the array a whose value will be changing from 0 to 5 when it is 5 the condition will be false it will come out of the loop now our program is ready so you can see in our program we have declared array of five elements then this is the procedure to read these five values from the user and this is the procedure for displaying that values to the user again let us compile this program without any error now we will run it you can see it is asking me to enter five integer numbers so let us enter any five integer values like let's say 11 22 33 44 and 55 after i enter five values i will press enter key now you can see these five values are stored inside array the first value 11 is stored in a0 second value 22 in a1 likewise last value 55 in a4 so we are able to now declare an array one dimensional numeric array initialize it by taking user input and display the values present in this array i hope you understood these basic concepts about one dimensional array in next video session i will explain how to write programs to process these values for that time 
or till that time goodbye